Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. There has been a lot of excitement recently with the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope. Unité, top. And we have engine start. And liftoff. Decollage, liftoff from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. The JWST will be located about a million miles from Earth, and from there it'll be able to see much further back in time, more so than what the Hubble was able to see. As a matter of fact, it will see in the infrared light, which is blind to the Hubble. Why infrared? It's very important. One of the main features of the James Webb Space Telescope will be to observe light in the red through the infrared light as compared to the visible light spectrum that was assigned to the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, this will allow it to see much further into the past as the light from the distant galaxies have now shifted into the, uh, from the visible light spectrum into the infrared light, which we just cannot see with conventional telescopes nor here on Earth as the atmosphere interferes with that spectrum. Hence, it will be able to see those stars and galaxies hidden by interstellar dust and the red shifted light waves. When you look at the distance to other uh, objects in space that we're familiar with, for example, the International Space Station is about 240 miles or 400 kilometers above the, uh, uh, the Earth. Uh, the Hubble Space Telescope is currently sitting at about 340 miles uh, or 547 kilometers. Uh, my favorite, weather satellites, uh, the geostationary weather satellites that is, uh, they're at 22,236 miles, or if you like kilometers, 35,786 uh, kilometers. And the moon, uh, on the average, is 239,000 miles away. And the L2 point, uh, where the James Webb Space Telescope will reside once it reaches that location, is just shy of a million miles from Earth, 932,000 uh, 57 miles or one and a half million kilometers away. You know, with all this excitement, I was wondering, will I be able to see the James Webb telescope with my telescope right here in the backyard? So I put that to the test last night. Here's the results. Let me just give you a fair warning. I was a little bit excited. The James Webb Space Telescope, is this it right here? Let's see if it moves. Coming up. It did. That was it. That's it. The James Webb Space Telescope. Uh, you can see it moving uh, in that one five minute frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bunch of these frames together and see if I can get it moving across uh, this field of view. And it's a rather large field of view. I'm, I'm zoomed in. Um, uh, there it is right there. It's between, oh, we got this double star here and this trio of stars here. So let's zoom out a little bit. And... Yeah, you know, there it is. I do have it kind of. It is centered. It's pretty good. So this this is going to be exciting. We're going to keep an eye on this. All right. So I can actually see the James Webb Space Telescope from here in Savannah with my five-inch telescope. <laughs> So here is a uh, stacked image from all the images I took last night. It's about a four and a half hour uh, of uh, stacked images. And you can't really see much at all at the moment, but right down here is where I picked up the first uh, sa uh, satellite uh, image of the uh, James Webb Space Telescope is right about here. And you can very see, see a very faint line stretching across right over here. Let's zoom in just a little bit more and um, um, take a look at that. And there you can see it. that that's what it was. It shows up better in the animation, which I'm going to be showing very shortly. But th there you can see a better streak here. Uh, over here where there's missing data, that's when I went through the uh, meridian flip and the uh, telescope missed uh, several minutes of data there. But anyway, uh, there you can see the spacecraft zooming across the sky uh, in front of the background stars as it was moving. And from my video last night, uh, Tim McCullen from Tocoa, Georgia, said he's been animating it as well. And he's been spotting it from his telescope up there in northeastern Georgia. And look at the animation. You can definitely see it. Uh, 
he uh, took uh, he had 17 10 minute images from last night and he had it at what a 925 millimeter focal length and it looked like it's amongst the stars but it's nowhere anywhere near other than the sun of course he said he's also looking forward to uh, my um, video that's coming up with the animation I got coming up right after this so I'll be showing that animation of my system coming up very shortly so stick around you know there's been other great discoveries in science back in 1609 when Galileo first turned his modified telescope or spyglass it was called at the time looking up at the moon and then more so at the planet Jupiter and discovering it had moons that orbit around them. Uh, more discoveries came later. In 1917, the Hook telescope, the 100-inch uh, telescope at Mount Wilson was unveiled and first light came about. And the discoveries that galaxies were not part of our galaxies and they weren't nebula, they were actual galaxies like our galaxy, but much further away. And then in 1949, the Palomar Telescope, also known as the Hale Telescope, uh, was uh, seeing its first light. One of the greatest discoveries of the Hale Telescope indicated that the universe was not only expanding, but the expansion was accelerating. So you know, who knows what we're going to see with the discoveries of the James Webb Space Telescope. Only time will tell, and it's not that far away. Uh, less than a month, it'll probably see its first light. It's on the way right now to the space location where it will reside for its lifetime, about a million miles from Earth. Will the JWST replace the backyard telescope? No, nah, not really. This is a hobby, a hobby of self-awareness, to see with our own eyes and our own cameras the beauty of the heavens that are above us, and they're all around us, and everyone has the capability of seeing these majestic objects, the nebulae, the galaxies, uh, the different stars, and the uh, uh, planets themselves, all in a sky near you. So remember, unless you need rain, look up and enjoy the heavenly skies.